Hello guys, welcome back to this week's episode of TGIF. Thank God it's forever. Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. This here is Chaplain Andrew to teach you the unchangeable and unfailable Word of God. Listen for this theme song and you'll know. It's me, hello, podcast land. Hello, guys. We are here live. Let me get my little tea packet open here. I like this. This is actually a Weiler's Light. It's not the Snapple that I'm used to, but the Weiler's Light. And it's actually a good brand. I like the tea flavor. So how are we doing today, guys? Hey, it's uh, it's Wednesday night. And you know what that means. That means Dr. Scott is going to teach us something. And <clears throat> I don't want to give too much away, but Dr. Scott's got a little something for you on the show today, too. It's going to be phenomenal. So let me take a quick second here. Hold on. Give me a quick second. There you go. I didn't think you wanted to hear me shake up my iced tea packet, so I had to mute my channel for a minute. It's nice they got a mute button on my mixer now, so I can mute things instead of having to do it straight from the show. That way you don't miss anything on the show itself. <clears throat> but no, Dr. Scott's got a little something, something for you guys, so look forward to that soon on the show when we start the message. But for right now, how are you doing today? Let me take me a quick drink. My wife today made some beautiful boxed shells and cheese. Don't get me wrong, she can cook, but it was good. I loved it. It was very, very tasty. And I like my shells and cheese, especially especially when it's the thick, creamy kind, not the powdered stuff. The powdered stuff is okay, but the real nice and thick and creamy, oh yeah, that's the way I like it. As my buddy Dan used to say, Yes. Thick and creamy. Yeah. <clears throat> My guys at work would say, no, nah, because that's just the way it is. I, I I have this running joke now at work with the guys at work because they all, I, because they'll say something like, uh, they'll say, did you do this? And I didn't do it. And they'll say, no. Nah. So now they got that, no. Nah. I said, I said, you've been hit with the no. Nah. You got with the evidence. So, give me a second here. What are you doing, buddy? Sit down. The people know you're on the on, in the room today, buddy, because you're growling on the show. Say hi to the peoples. Say hi, peoples. Say I'm Duke. Yeah, you're my special little guy, aren't you, buddy? We love you. Yeah. So sit down, buddy. Go ahead and sit down. Sorry about that. But now you know he's here. Our little mascot of TGIF, Duke, is here today. And he is going to be a blessing on the show. He ain't going to do much of anything. He might even just, like he always does, he might just fall asleep. <laughs> That's pretty much what he does. So, just tell you something funny, by the way, because I, I laughed at it. And I had the whole kitchen rolling last night, yesterday at work. And try this on your friends, but go up to somebody and ask them to, and tell them, you say, look, I guarantee you, you've been spelling farm wrong all these years. They go, yeah. Prove it. You say, well, spell farm. They go, F-A-R-M. He said, no, see, you're spelling it wrong. He said, well, how do you spell it then? He say, E-I-E-I-O. <laughs> It's dumb. I had the whole kitchen rolling at it. So, with that being said, what do you want, buddy? So, with that being said, let me give my wife a text for just a second. 
because I think he needs to go outside. Just give me one second. Hold on, buddy. Hold on, buddy. They know you're on the show now, buddy. The people knows it. So I just texted mom so you can go outside if you need to, buddy. So with that being said, how are we all doing today? We, we got a good message for you today. Actually, there is a series. It's going to be a series message, and it's going to be fun. Anything Dr. Scott does is phenomenal. Don't get me wrong. He's not a perfect person. But whatever, whatever Dr. Scott does, God gives it to him anyways, and it's perfect because God gave it to him. So he's going to preach a word, and it's going to be a, a blessing. It's going to be a blessing. So look forward to Dr. Scott's word, and let's get into a few but brief announcements. Starting with number one, go to community call 222 at gmail.com, spelled C-O-M-M-U-N-I-T-Y-C-L-O-U-D, 222 at il.com and guess what you can do right there well you can send you all of your prayer requests even if you want to shout you on the podcast send me your first name your city and your state and I'll shout out to you on TGIF where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first also be aware guys you can call us at 1-302-448-8443 again that's 1-302-448-TGIF where Jesus does most definitely and ultimately come first. Give me one more second here, just a second, guys. Give me one more second here, guys. I am so sorry about this. It's okay, buddy. It's okay, buddy. It's okay. I know. I'm getting on right now. So, you also, guys, we're doing it this week's episode right now of Outside the Classroom Wednesdays where we take Dr. Scott's message from outside the classroom to those who need the gospel each and every week. Also, guys, be aware, <clears throat> be aware that we are going to be doing this week's episode of Kingdom Collaboration Thursdays where we take Pastor Lance and Ornissa Travis's message from outside the classroom to those who need the gospel each and every week. Also, guys, be aware. Be aware. Duke Buddy. Duke Buddy, hold on. Be aware, guys, that we're doing this week's episode of Worship. Saturdays, we're doing nothing but praise, prayer, and worship. Grab a favorite drink. Grab a favorite. Hold on. Hold on, guys. Announcements. Grab your favorite drink, relax in your favorite lounge chair, and enjoy the fabulous music we have here on the show. Because all we do is praise, prayer, and worship. <clears throat> also, guys, be aware that the rumble is going to be happening soon, just not yet. We're going to get that situated, hopefully, uh, July of next year, of 2024. And once that happens, it's going to be a blessing to you guys. And not just to you guys, but to me as well, because I'm going to love doing this with you guys. I'm going to absolutely love doing this with you guys with the Rumble. So with that being said, look forward to that real, real soon. Also, guys, be vitally aware that you can download this app. It's called Podcast Portal, spelled P-O-D-C-A-S-T space P-O-R-T-A-L. Available on the Google Play Store, the Amazon App Store, and the App Toy Market. And guess what you can do right there on the app? You can listen, like, comment, and subscribe straight from the app while we're live or not live. You can also, you can also while we're not live, 
You can download every single episode and you can view the chapters button. So for downloading every episode, just play the play play a certain episode you want to hear. And then as the commercial starts, then you hit the download button second from the last on the on the, where the logo is. Once you click the download button for the first time, it'll ask you, do you want to trust this source? And you just click yes or whatnots. And then once you do that, it'll start downloading. You just stop the episode from playing and you can finish the download. And then if you go to the three dots in the top right-hand corner, it'll show three dots. It'll have a list of things to pop up. One of them should say download history. And it'll show you what, uh, what you have downloaded in the last, you know, how many ever long you download stuff like last week, two weeks, three weeks, whatnot. Also, guys, you can also view the chapters button when we're not live. That will show you everything that was played on the show. And if you want to hear just like just the message, click on the message and it takes you just the message. If you want to, if you want to hear just like say born again, just click on born again. It plays just born again. So, with that being said, what else you can do on the app? You can, you can uh, connect with us through Facebook, Twitter, and email. Yes, email. Go to the bottom right-hand corner of any page and click on the email button. looks like an envelope. Then click on your email client. Then click that Always button. That's the key there, the Always button. So, when you click the Always button, next time you go back to the email, it'll take you straight to the email just like that. You won't even have to think twice. So, and then once you do that, then you just type in your email and then you hit send. It's that simple. It's that easy. And you'll never, ever, ever, ever have to type in the email again. So, look forward to that. Also, guys, you can P you can DM us on Twitter and you can PM us on, well, you can DM us on Twitter and you can view the Facebook page. The Facebook page we got for the app as well. So you can do that as well with the app. Also, guys, <clears throat> you can listen to the four play buttons. Number one, 95.5 DeFish from Cleveland, Ohio. Number two, KJIC out of Texas. Number three, my former church, Evangelical Christian Churches. And number four, my former church down here, Portage Community Chapel. For 95.5 DeFish and KJIC, just click their buttons. It plays their radio station. And then for, <clears throat> and then for uh, the evangel button, just click on the evangel button. It says evangel right on there. And then it takes you to their YouTube page and start, and then you just click on a video. It starts playing their videos. So you can see and hear them as well. With the Portage Community Chapel abstract color button, I call it, because it's got some blues and greens and browns. It looks like an abstract picture, even though, it doesn't say uh, Portage Community on there at all, but it does have some colors too because I couldn't really do it just right. So I click on that, <clears throat> and then it takes that takes you to their About Vimal page. Once you're on their About Vimal page, click on where it says Videos, and then once you click on the word Videos, then you click on a video that does not say Upcoming, and then you click on the Play button, and you're instantly hearing and seeing their videos as well. <clears throat> Sorry about that, guys. With that being said, hold on just for a second. With that being said, um, my favorite part of the app is the portal chat feature. We can chat with whoever owns this app. If 500 people own this app, you can chat with 500 different people around the world. You can send pictures and you can even PM everybody. Excuse me. <clears throat> Just be careful. Hold on just for a second. So with that being said, uh, if you see anything, hear anything, or witness anything that's inappropriate, 
or racial or whatnots, then do let me know what's going on because I'll warn them. And if they do the same offense again, I'll ban them for a week. And then once I ban them for a week, if they do the same offense one last time, then I'll ban them for indefinite. They can still use the app, still view all the stuff that's going on with the app, but they will not be able to use the portal chat feature. <clears throat> With that being said, you can even send pictures through the app as well. All you do is you go to your camera and you take a picture with your camera and then you save it to your camera roll. You then go into the portal chat. You click on the little camera icon. Once you do that, then you click on upload picture. You click the picture you want to upload and then you hit send. It's that simple and easy. And you can send a picture straight through the app. But you have to have an account to do so. It's a security feature so so that every so that no just random bimbo can come on there and start going send, 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 and sending stuff that don't need to be on there. So with that being said, <clears throat> that was Podcast Portal. Ask your Alexa device, last of the announcements. Ask your Alexa device. Say Alexa, open Podcast Portal. And she say welcome to or welcome back to Podcast Portal where you can listen to this very show straight from your Alexa devices. You also got that skill for your video Alexa devices as well. Again, say Alexa, open Podcast Portal. You say welcome to or welcome back to Podcast Portal. And that does, guys, conclude our announcements for today. Let's get into the main song of the show, and it is entitled Jesus, My Lord of My Life, by none other than Dr. Prophet Larry Orell. Enjoy Jesus, My Lord of My Life. Jesus, my light and salvation, Jesus, my song in the night, Jesus, my hope for tomorrow, Jesus, my Lord and my light, my rock, my fortress, my sweet hiding place, Jesus, my shelter and warmth, my friend, my comfort, my strength for today, Jesus, my peace in the storm, Jesus, the water. Jesus, you're all that I need. Jesus, the heartbeat within me. Jesus, my everything. My rock, my fortress, my sweet hiding place. Jesus, my shelter and warmth, my friend, my comfort, my strength for today, Jesus, my peace in the storm, Jesus, my light and the salvation. You're my song in the night. Jesus, my hope for tomorrow. Jesus, my Lord and my life. Jesus, you're the truth.
Sorry about the mouse delay, guys. That was Jesus, my Lord and my life, but none other than Dr. Prophet Larry O'Rell. Let's get into today's message. Simply entitled from Dr. Scott. Simply entitled the Sermon on the Mount, Part 1. Enjoy Sermon on the Mount. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you once again, Chaplain, for the opportunity to bring a word. I want to welcome everybody. Uh, we've been looking at the stats. We're touching quite a few countries. We're very honored to be in many, many countries. I always count an honor to preach the word, the gospel. Um, I'm going to start a series today. We'll cover the next several weeks. On the Sermon on the Mount, uh, Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7, I'm not exactly sure how many weeks it'll be, but it will be several weeks. I'm going to take a break in, I think, two weeks and do a, a very special Easter message entitled, The Stone the Builder Rejected. That will be Wednesday before Easter Sunday. So let's get into prayer. Father, thank you once again for the opportunity to be here to share your word. I ask you to take coals of the brazen altar. Touch these lips of clay. Once again, I ask you to open our ears to hear. Allow our spirits to receive. As we go into your word, I thank you. I count it a great honor and a privilege. I ask you to bless my brothers and sisters around the world that are listening. Some, Lord, are in persecuted countries taking a chance. I ask you to bless them. God, they, Increase in their faith and their trust and belief in you. I ask you give them courage to share you with others. That souls will be one to you. We've counted a privilege and an honor to serve you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Now when he, being Jesus, saw the crowd, he went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. Looking at the interesting city, they came from all over Galilee, Judea, and the regions of Tyre and Sidon. Uh, Sidon. The tiny land of Palestine had an incredibly large population in the first century, and it was very poor. Uh, the name of Jesus was on everyone's lip, and his fame spread like wildfire. He was Unlike today with TV or radio, it was all by word of mouth. And he was very well known. Uh, he was indeed a miracle worker. He healed the blind, the deaf, the lame, the demon possessed. He raised the dead to life. And everyone wanted to see him, to hear him, to witness or to benefit from his miracles. So... They had come to the area of the north end of the Sea of Galilee, which the Romans renamed Lake Tiberias. And he was teaching and healing in the section between the fishing village of Capernaum, which is where Simon and Peter, Simon, Peter, and Andrew were from, and the Roman city of Tiberias. And the Sea of Galilee is actually below sea level and fills the mouth of a long existed volcano. The crowd was so large and pressing that they, they taught from the boat. I preached uh, out a little bit on this a few weeks ago. But the rising ground around the lake, it actually formed an amphitheater. So it became a very natural place to speak. And said after seeing the multitudes, Jesus withdrew and he taught his disciples uh, the matchless message recorded here in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. He took time away from everybody and poured into his disciples. Could you imagine? Now, I've been around many good teachers and great teachers in my lifetime. But could you imagine when you realize that you are with the Son of God and he was teaching? What an impartation into life. And he directed the straight to the disciples, he's preparing them. Well, the the beatitudes really is how our attitudes should be. Uh, Jesus' disciples and their and their nation had problems. They lived under the military occupation of a foreign power of Rome, 
Uh, Roman taxes were an awesome burden, taking a third of a poor man's earnings. Uh, these taxes took the bread from people's mouths. Uh, they, they were the very rich who were very few in number and the masses of the very poor. Human slavery was an accepted part of life throughout the Roman world and the land was filled with racial and religious strife. And there was even prejudice between Judah and Galilean Jews. So you see in the setting of itself a lot of problems. One was a revolutionary outlook. Their thought, their their view was let blood flow in the streets. By this, the Palestinians meant Roman blood. You know, their their view was just kill all the Romans. And then there was a political view, uh, like Simon the Zealot. His full expression was in AD 66. So that that was his type of view. Killing the second view was uh, a lot of the, a very stoic view. Grit your teeth and bear it. Don't fight it. Just let them do what has to be done. Many, many of the Pharisees or the religious leaders adopted that stance. The third one, still another response, was the escapist. Uh, they would go build monasteries, go find a place to live. They believed that politics and Jewish religion in the day was corrupt, so they gave up on both. Oh my goodness, can you imagine if times got tough and we quit sharing about Jesus? Mm. They are expecting the Messiah to come, and they spent their time in work, prayer, and rigid discipline, but they were doing nothing for the kingdom. They'd be ready for the end time and the kingdom of God. And the fourth response was to just give up resistance and join the enemy. That's what the devil tries. He beats us up and beats us up and tries to get us to do all that we can to give in and to join that one. But Jesus' attitude was totally different. His was a kingdom attitude. He was a young rabbi or a teacher who knew his people, their hopes, their fears, their anxiety, their spiritual hunger. He saw them as sheep without a shepherd and loved them to the point of tears and self-sacrifice. He proclaimed a different kind of kingdom, different than what the people were seeing. It was one of brotherhood under the lordship of God. The kingdom Jesus preached is the one of absolute purity. And it, 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 it was all about the entire person. The theme of the sermon was the theme of happiness. Uh, kind of in America, we think happiness is a birthright, but Jesus gives up his kingdom. He gives up heaven to come down to do what he's doing. And he gives us a kingdom standard for inner happiness and well-being. It's not about what we have. It's about who we are. It's a sharp, sharp contrast. Totally different from what the world believed. So here's a brief outline we're going to be looking at over the next several weeks. The sermon deals with this, with number one, in, in uh, chapter 5, verses 3 to 48. It talks about the spirit and attitude in which we should live. Uh Verse, or chapter 6, verse 118, relates to the laws and practices of Judaism. The third part of it is in six, chapter 6, verses 19 to 34, kingdom persons not depending on material riches. Uh, the fourth part is how we're to relate to our neighbor, in chapter 7, verses 1 to 12. And the fifth part is the call to decision and action by which we may enter the kingdom. So I'm excited to be doing this teaching. We're kind of setting up a little bit of a spot to here before we get to teaching. In this message, we're called to strive to measure up to a perfect standard. Not perfect of flawlessness but perfect as we can yet we will fail and repent and we are forgiven 
we do our best. None of us are going to be perfect without any incident. We, we have a right to happiness, but not happiness at any price. Something, if I'm, I could be happy if I could put somebody else down, or if I can step on somebody to get to where I want to be, that's, that's not... No, not at any price. Our happiness comes from the Lord. And the, the scriptures here will address the great themes of life. Um, it'll use the term blessed or happy. And really what it means is, oh, how happy. Or to be congratulated. It describes an inner happiness. Not what we have on the outside. It's not about our possessions. If we look at Jesus and the Beatitudes, he said, Those who realize their spiritual poverty, who have godly sorrow for their sins, who live as God controlled the meek, are to be congratulated, or blessed, he said. Congratulations, blessed, is said Jesus. In effort are those who hunger and thirst after the things of God. Blessed are those who show mercy, who are pure in heart, who are making peace. That's the happy Christian life. That's the kind of life we should have. Jesus was a happy person. My goodness, he, I'm sure he attracted the children. They came readily to him. The disciples tried to stop him, but said, no, let the children come. We should be like that child that runs to daddy. And we should want to sit on his lap and let him talk to us, let him love on us. The spiritual happiness is an inner happiness. It's inside. Paul wrote in Rome to the Philippians while he was in chains. He, re he said, rejoice. And again I say rejoice. His rejoicing was from inside. Our inner peace, our blessedness, are not dependent upon or controlled by outward circumstances. It depends on, or doesn't depend on where we live or how we live. Uh, I, I'm really honored to be speaking to other countries, and I and I know some are even struggling to hear the word. Some of be having to hide to hear the word and. It could be in a persecuted country, but I, I pray God's blessing upon you, and, and I'm very honored to be speaking to you. Our relationship with God is the key. The Sermon on the Mount makes it clear that the secret of happiness is a result of a right relationship. Jesus was happy, but he was not always successful. I'll say it again. He was happy but not always successful. Not everybody came to know him as Savior. He was shut down out of the temple. He was put out of the temple, the synagogue, his hometown, even his home and some of his family. Yet in the upper room on the eve of his betrayal and denial, he said to his disciples, These things I have spoken to you that you may that, I'm sorry, my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. We see that in John chapter 15. So even after this teaching, right before his death, he was saying, blessed are you, blessed are you. Happiness, our happiness comes from right living with God. I don't always walk around with a smile on my face. Sometimes I'm in a bad mood. But I'm happy in my spirit. Things around me may frustrate me physically, emotionally. But my joy comes from the Lord. My joy comes from in, inside. And as Christians, our happiness is not seasonal. It's not circumstantial. Our happiness is not limited to this life alone. It's here. It's going to be in the hereafter. And we'll never can really know truly how great it is.
Let's get into the scripture now. I've set up, I gave a, a setting and a background. Let's look at these first two scriptures. Chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. What's the nature of happiness? When we chase it, we may not catch it. It really comes unexpectedly while we're doing something else. Jesus said that when we try to save our lives, we lose them. Yet, strangely enough, when we lose or give our lives away, suddenly we realize we found them. So it's not about doing. It's about going about God's business. What's the result of, of a usefulness? When we live our lives and live creatively, we are most often happy. We're told uh, barnacles are born free-swimming creatures. Then one day they attach themselves to a piling or ship's hull or to a rock, and they grow a hard shell of protection in a stationary position, and they spend the rest of their lives kicking food into their mouths with their hind legs. They put themselves into a type of prison. Our happiness comes from usefulness. I often have said I, I didn't really want to do a podcast. I argued with God. I thought, who's going to listen to me? And Chaplain Andrew and I have known each other for a lot of years. And, and I was praying. And long story short, we're doing the podcast. I'm greatly honored. And I really am enjoying doing this. Now, so our happiness comes when we are right with God. We discover we can be blessed despite any outward circumstances. Jesus had an unshaken faith in his Father, even when the world was the worst around him. You imagine your purpose on life, on earth, is to die. That's why Jesus came, to give his life for us. But yet he was happy. Even though they were constantly persecuting him, he was happy because of his relationship with the Father. Matter of fact, in John chapter 15, verse 11, it says, These things I have spoken to you that my, that my joy... Jesus said that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Wow, when we have God in us, we have the Holy Spirit in us, our joy is full to overflowing. Yet few have suffered more than Paul. And he was still able to write from Nero's prison in Rome to the believers in Philippi, Rejoice! Rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Wow, Philippians 4.4. 4. Rejo- he is in jail. But he says rejoice. Sometimes we choose to be grumpy. Sometimes we choose not to be happy. And, but when we learn, regardless of the circumstances around us, we realize that God is in us, and we need to rejoice. Happiness comes when we are right with God, when our fellow human beings, and within ourselves. And the reverse is true. When sin separates us from the Father, then we have problems with other people, and we don't like it except ourselves. We become very unhappy. Let's look at the first beatitude. The blessed are the poor in spirit. The poor in spirit are not simply the poor. Poverty is no guarantee of spirituality. I know some believe the poorer you are, the greater you are in the kingdom work. And that's not true. Um, You know, here in America, I'm not considered rich at all, but yet I have been blessed to be in several other countries where they thought I was the richest person on earth. Our richness comes, our joy comes from the Lord. 
So the poor may be happy, but their happiness is in spite of poverty, not due to it. Neither does the Beatitude promise blessedness to the poor in spirit. The poor in spirit are those who know their need of God. The poor in spirit are those who know their need in God. Each of us should be poor in spirit because we know our need in God. And we are aware of their spiritual poverty. It's an inward condition of the mind and the heart, not an outward circumstance. So our poor is a poor in spirit, which means my spirit needs God. Just as my body needs physical food, my spirit needs spiritual food. My spirit needs to socialize with God. And there's a reward for blessed are the poor. There's a reward. If we look at this, the first clause of each one sets forth a condition, the kind of character. The second part of it describes the results. So, blessed are the poor in spirit, and here's the reward. The kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God is wherever and in whomever the will of God is done. We're not just talking about being in heaven after we pass away. The kingdom of heaven is in us. The joy of the Lord's in us. And wherever we go, we bring God with us. This beatitude consists of call to repent. Jesus said, blessed are the poor. And James wrote in chapter 4, verse 6, God resists the proud. So if we put our pride aside... We accept Christ and allow Christ to walk with us, to teach us, to train us. Then we can do as Paul said in Philippians 2, 5, let the mind be in you, which also is in Christ. Our goal is to be Christ-like. What a powerful, powerful beatitude. Let's look at the second one. We continue to read, Blessed are those that mourn, for they will be comforted. In verse 4, those who mourn, what's possible blessing could come from being in sorrow? We get a glimpse of the answer when we remember that Jesus was a man of sorrows, acquainted with our griefs. Isaiah wrote that 600 years before Jesus was born. A man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. You see that in Isaiah 53, 3. Sorrow has the potential to make us bitter or better. I'm going to repeat that. Sorrow can make us bitter or it can make us better. We can learn from what we suffer and sorrow can teach us true values, what really matters most in life. And sorrow can lead us to God and to a deeper, richer faith. So we can either take sorrow and walk around and say, woe is me, woe is me. Or if we have the sorrow in spirit, we can get into the presence of God and let him, let him lift. No one, no one is exempt from sorrow. There's lessons to learn when we sorrow because of the sufferings of others. Christianity is caring. We as Christians, we care about others. We feel the sin, the pain, the grief, the sorrow of others. And with sensitivity and helpfulness, we reach out to them. It's the ministry of encouragement. The sorrow about which the Beatitude speaks is a godly sorrow for sin. We find somebody in pain and hurting, we reach out to them. God's reaching out to us. Let's look at their reward. Jesus declared that the reward of those who suffer is they shall be comforted. Wow. Thank you, Lord, that in my suffering, in my suffering, you comfort me. 
You think if you're sick in your body and you, you want to find a place to lay down and, and get a blanket over you if you're cold or pillow under your head. And, and if you're in a hospital, they come and they check on you. Are you comfortable? Are you comfortable? You want to be comfortable. When we are, wow, when we're suffering in our spirit, the reward is we shall be comforted. We're in that part that God can reach down and really speak to us. Through him we find compassion and grace to comfort others. Because he has comforted us, we learn to comfort others. The Greek word for comforters means one who comes alongside. One who comes alongside. The Greek word actually is paraclete. A comforter, I like, I have a blanket. I sit down, and if it gets cold, like today, I'll put the blanket over me, and I wrap up in it. It's my comforter. It keeps me warm. When my grandchildren were little and come by, or my son was young and want to crawl under the blanket with Daddy or crawl under the blanket with Papa and, and, and get warm, and that's the comforter. That's what the Lord does. He wraps around us. Mm. He puts his arms of love and compassion around us and he warms us he's the comforter he said well pastor I'm going through a lot right now give it to the Lord see not all suffering is a result of sin not all suffering is a result of sin. Sometimes we suffer because of an attack of the enemy on us. Because of outward struggles, circumstances. Two days ago, it was fairly nice weather. Today it's real cold again. Next week's supposed to warm up the first week of spring but it's going to rain for four straight days. If we look at that, we can stay inside and say, oh, woe is me, the weather is bad. But we learn to bundle up. We go out and we do what we have to. Let's take the Lord and be like that coat around us and bundle up as we go out. As we go out. As we end today's broadcast, I'm excited to know that God is our comforter. God is our comforter. Whatever you're going through today, let me pray for you. Extend your hand. Extend your hand. As I extend mine, touch your phone or whatever device you're listening to as you're holding it. I'm going to touch. I'm on my computer. I'm touching it as a point of contact. Father, thank you. I lift my brother and my sister. I lift those who are listening right now to the program. Thank you for Chaplain Andrew and the, the gift, the vision that you've given him for TGIF. The gift and vision you've given him to do a podcast. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to teach your word. And as I lift my brothers and sisters in the other parts of the world, I may never physically see them, but spiritually we are connected. We are connected through the Father. Because of the Son and Calvary and by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, I bind with my brother and my sister for the need that they have. And Lord, some may be in a persecuted country. I thank you for the protection you have placed upon them. God, I pray that as this word goes out, we're not looking for numbers, Lord. We're looking for increase to hear the word, to help take the word forward. So I ask you to bless my brother and my sister who's listening. And as they share you with someone, I pray that you will touch and bless them. Touch and bless the one who hears. Lord, we're going to continue to plant the seed and expect the word to grow. 
Today we choose to praise you. We choose to thank you. Lord, I lift physical needs right now to ask you to touch and heal according to your word. Lord, financial burdens that are there, we thank you that you're going to help meet them. Lord, for whatever situation we are in, we choose to give it to you. We choose to give it to you right now. We're going to thank you according to Hebrews chapter 11. By faith, we're going to reach out and we're going to believe and we're going to trust. And Lord, as we continue to do as the Beatitude says, we change our attitude towards you. We thank you for the reward that you're going to give us. We choose to praise you right now. We choose to thank you to glorify you in Jesus' precious and wonderful name. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Looking forward to next. There you go, guys. It cut off for some odd reason, but that was the way Dr. Scott had it done. So let's get into our next song on the list. Excuse me. Our next song and our next set of praise and worship. Excuse me. Is <clears throat> We Declare War, but none other than Dr. Tom Ray from his CD, Evangel Live. Enjoy We Declare War. We declare one, two, three, four.
soldiers here tonight? Do we have any soldiers here tonight? God's got an army that's not afraid to fight. We rise up in his strength. Come on, tell me. There you go, guys. That was We Declare War by none other than Dr. Tom Ray from his CD, Evangel Live. Let's get into our next praise and worship song. And it is not track from an unknown artist. It is Clean, Clean Heart by none other than my guest on the show, Pastor Evangelist Dudley Smith. Enjoy Clean, Clean Heart. Oh, problems coming down a dusty road, I believe. Yes. A hand of fear gripped the crowd. Oh, it was that day had Jairus home. Oh, yes. When the doctor sadly said, Your daughter, she is gone. You could feel. Parents' heart break. Oh, yes, you could. And you could hear, hear them cry and moan. Because that daughter, the little girl, was only 12, only 12 years old. Oh, but somewhere, somewhere in the distance, outlined, outlined against the sun, there came a man from a mission, on a mission from the throne. Well, then somebody said, look, somebody's coming. But what they did not, what they could not, what they did not know, that there was a promise, promise coming down, coming down that dusty, that dusty road. Oh, yeah. 
laughter when the Lord begins to speak. He said, she's not dead, but she's just only asleep. He turned to the multitude, told them all, you go home. And he said, leave me and death, just leave us alone. Then he laid his hand on the child. He looked right into her eyes. He said, all power is given unto me. Then with a voice of thunder, just like that, he tore death asunder. He said, little girl, you rise and end the heat. Yeah, there's a promise coming down the dusty road. you need that and hell he will defeat let the bombs coming down the dusty road yes let the bombs coming down the dusty road yes it did them. and from his only hand healing virtue flows oh yes he come to give you what you need that and hell There you go, guys. That was a promise coming down that dusty road by my guest on the show, Pastor Evangelist Dudley Smith. And if you didn't hear in the background, that was actually uh, Jimmy Swagger, Pastor Jimmy Swagger playing the piano. That was one of his live broadcasts episodes when it was back in the day, back in the 80s. So with that being said, Let's get into our next song, and then we'll pray. Our next song is We Need by none other than the K. Daniel Spirit and Truth Worship Band, one of the greatest bands we have on the show. Enjoy We Need. Thank you. 
There you go, guys. That was We Need by none other than the Cajun Spirit and Truth Worship Band. So, finally, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Then we'll play the last song. And then we're going to end the show with that. So, um, first off, before we pray, I need to mention this. Not that I need to. See, I'm not going to tell the right hand what the left hand is doing. But, because you know how the devil is. He already knows what's going on. He knows that I'm trying to do something big for God, and he's going to try to stop me. So here's what's going on. So to make a long story short, I've been ministering to a gentleman in prison. And as kids, we were at odds with each other. We, we hated each other. It was a love-hate relationship. I think I told you about Chris already. And so... um. When we were in the in the uh, Adrian Training School together, uh, <clears throat> you know things were happening and it wasn't good. And so years later, after after me being released from prison, becoming a, a chaplain, then a pastor, and all this stuff, um, I ended up reconnecting with him. I found him on the uh, offender tracking system, ATS, I think it is. It's something like that. Otis. Yeah, Otis. I found him on the offender information system, whatever it is. Otis. And I looked him up, and I figured, you know, like him up to where he's at, what he's doing. And then God told me to write to him. So I wrote to him, and after that, we st I started ministering more to him. It, it stopped for a minute, and then I went back to writing him again. And then I kept writing and writing and ministering and ministering, and then now he got email. So now they got this little tablet they can email you with. But I realized he was getting a parole soon. And because he said he was getting parole, but he says the only reason why they wouldn't let him out is because, not because he's doing bad, it's because he don't have a place to live and he don't have a support system. So I took it upon me and God to do something about that. So we've been in contact with, well, first off, my pastor, my pastor, Dr. Cheryl Pitscopo, Sold the house next door, so that wasn't an option. My last option I was the Jesus House in Detroit, and so I messaged them. They're willing to take them in, and all the stuff. It's going to be a great, true blessing, and hopefully, hopefully, hopefully that, um, because I don't know what he know. <clears throat> I don't know anything about what he thinks about the area because it's in Detroit, so it's not. It's not. The greatest of all areas, but you know what? God will keep him, and God will make sure he stays safe. So, I'm going to email him tonight, but we're going to send paperwork over to him, just to be on a safe side, so he knows what's going on. And we're going to send paperwork over to him, into the prison. He'll sign them, and he'll send them back out. And it's going to be a true blessing. I guarantee this. It's going to be awesome. God's going to do mighty works in this. And what's funny is because, you know, when you're distracted by things, and you can be distracted by worship music. Yes, you're worshiping God. Yes, you're honoring God. Yes, you're glorifying God. But that, at times, can be a distraction. So, what, what did God do? He had me go clean out my ears and stuff earwax into it so I can barely hear anything. So, when I go to hear my music, I can't hear nothing. So, what do I do when I have no music to play? I pray. I find out that the Jesus house will accept them wants to accept them, and I pray about it, and I pray about it, and guess what, the very next day, the, the very next, after, well, first off, when I found out that the Jesus house was still up and running, I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed, and guess what, they want to accept him. All he's got to do now is fill out some application stuff, and, you know, things like that, 
And once he does that, it's good to go. So I'm going to email him to uh, this weekend. Hopefully by Friday, I'll email him, give him the good news. And then from there, once we get the... Uh, once we get the the okay for everything to be sent over to them, I'll give them all his information. But let's give the Lord a clap offering on that note. Thank you, Jesus, that you are doing miracles in his life. And you are performing wonderful miracles that will get Chris back onto his feet. Now it's gonna be it's gonna be a struggle for Chris because there's gonna be a lot of stuff he can't do right away. Like, he can't have a cell phone for the first nine months, no job for the first six months, and no dating for the first year. Now, don't get me wrong, he may not be wanting to date anytime soon, and he may not, you know, but he might want a cell phone and stuff like that, or get a job soon, but not for the first six and nine months, because it's a way to dive deep into God, and dive deep into what God wants you to do. So, with that being said, I pray long and hard that this works out for Chris. And I've been praying and praying and praying. So let's pray. Lord, you know what's going on with this situation with Chris and whatever else is going on. You know what the devil wants to do. And you know what, and I know, and you know what I want. I, You know my prayers. And I know that whatever's going on is going on because of you, Lord. And I pray that you make this a smooth transition. That you, Lord, Cause it to work in his favor, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you that you're God and God alone, and that you are having your way in this ministry. I pray, Lord, that you continue to have your way. Let me decrease and let you increase so we can conquer this thing together and witness and witness to souls around the world. I thank you, Lord, that you are blessing everyone at the sound of a voice that not be what selfish, given their heart's desires as long as not be what selfish. And Lord, I ask you to heal them from the tops of their heads to the soles of their feet from cancer, diabetes, muscular dystrophy, multiple sclerosis. Heal my mom's arm, no, heal my sister's heart and her diabetes that they're not bad no more. And Lord, heal them from diseases that contracted themselves through sin. Yes, HIV, AIDS, syphilis, gonorrhea, herpes, Y. When you heal them, it shows your mercy, your power, and your grace. I'm reminded of a scripture that says you came through the door. It doesn't say you opened the door. It says you passed right straight through the door because you're all spirit at that moment. You said, Thomas, look at my hands. Thrust your finger in my side and see that I'm God. Go to Thomas, get on his knees and said, Truly you are the Son of God. What did you say? Blessed are those who have seen and believed. But doesn't stop there. It says, blessed are those who have not seen yet still believe. So show them now, Lord, so when they come back needing absolutely anything, they won't have to say it to see it to believe. Because your word says again, Lord, you're the same God yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you. We praise you. And we honor you. It's all in the matchless name of Christ that we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Boom, boom, boom. Amen. Boom, boom, boom. Amen, amen, amen. Let's get into our last song on the show, and it's entitled It's Not Goodbye by my friend and guest on the show, The Light Warrior. Enjoy, it's not goodbye.
space to know the one who occupies my dreams and look into his face. It's not goodbye if you heard him too. I'll be waiting, waiting in the peace. It's closer than. There you go, guys. It, that was It's Not Goodbye by my friend and guest on the show, The Light Warrior. That does conclude our show for today. Uh, two more things to remind you. Number one, download that app. It is absolutely 100% phenomenal. You can do all these wonderful things straight from the app. It's called Podcast Portal, spelled P-O-D-C-A-S-T space P-O-R-T-A-L. Available on the Google Play Store, on the Amazon App Store, and the App Toy Market. Also, ask your Alexa device, say Alexa, open Podcast Portal, and you say welcome to, or welcome back to Podcast Portal, where you can listen to this very show, straight from your Alexa devices. We also got this skill for your video video Alexa devices as well. Again, say Alexa, 
Open the podcast portal. You should say welcome to or welcome back to podcast portal. And that does, guys, conclude our show for today. As always, this is TGIF reminding you to, one, trust in the Lord and all your ways, two, lean on to your own understandings, and three, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Thank you, and good night.